What is logic? Logic is the right use of reason in the inquiry after truth and the communication of it to others. Again, logic is the right use of reason in the inquiry or the pursuit after truth and the communication of it to others. Natural logic is the good judgment and prudence that we exercise in our day-to-day -day life without the advantage of learning. There are many reasons why we should learn about and exercise our reason and go beyond natural logic. Some of the reasons are that truths have depth and difficulty to them. They have depth. It is a hard time seeing far into them at once and understanding them. Another reason that we should learn logic is because many things can appear disguised under false colors and are not as they appear. For example, the sun can appear flat. The moon can appear big as the sun. Uh, we often see mirages. There are things in our life that are not as they appear. And so we have to learn how to properly exercise reason. Another reason we need to exercise our reason and learn about logic is because our intellectual powers need assistance because they are frail and we make many errors because of our sinful state. We can be deceived by our senses, our imaginations, our passions, our appetites, authority of men, education, custom, etc. You've often heard the expression, he's told that lie so many times he's starting to believe it himself, or he's seeing what he wants to see. It is possible for us to be deceived by our very own senses. 1 Corinthians 3.18-19 says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Proverbs 26.12 says, Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Our conceit can be our own conceptions, that which we've imagined, made up, and oftentimes they are favorable or self-flattering opinions where we think more highly of ourselves or of our accomplishments than we should. And through our conceits, we can often deceive ourselves. Proverbs 19.21 says, there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. Another reason we have to learn how to make proper inquiry after truth is because as we have grown up, we have made thousands of judgments and decisions about things while our reason has not quite reached maturity. And that can affect us later on in life if we do not correct judgments that were made earlier in life. Another prime reason for us to exercise discernment is because Christians are commanded to exercise discernment in matters of doctrine and life and to stay away from false teaching. Hebrews 5.14 exhorts, But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised, to discern both good and evil. John 7.24 warns, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. A major part of logic and learning about logic is to cure the mistakes of immature and hasty judgments, as well as also to guard ourselves against our own baser instincts that are a result of our sinful nature. We are liars. It is possible for us to lie to ourselves. We must learn how to guard against that. There are four principal operations of our mind that we use when exercising our reason. Perception, judgment, argumentation, and disposition. Perception is apprehension of an idea. It is the simple contemplation of things that are offered to our mind without affirming or denying something about them. We are just merely thinking about them. These things appear in our mind as an idea. An example would be horse, tree, high, 
slow death. These can appear in our mind without us necessarily making a judgment about them. It just appears in our mind as an idea, and we just perceive it. The next step is judgment. It is the operation of the mind where we join two or more ideas together with either an affirmation or a negation. In other words, we either affirm or deny that those two ideas go together. For example, this tree is high. This horse is not swift. We've joined those two ideas together, horse and swift. Joining them together is our judgment on those ideas. The sentences that are a result of the judgment, such as the horse is not swift, that is called a proposition. We have proposed something about those ideas. Argumentation is reasoning. It is the operation of the mind where we infer or draw out one thing, that is one proposition, from two or more propositions that we already know. It is the drawing of a conclusion which we did not know before, or we weren't quite sure about. And they're drawn from propositions that we already know about or are evident. A simple example would be, one proposition would be, an oak tree is a plant. Another proposition would be, a plant cannot move by itself. If we join those propositions and reason on them, we can then say that because an oak tree is a plant, and plants cannot move by themselves, we can reason then that an oak tree cannot move by itself either. And that is called argumentation. The three propositions which are taken all together are called an argument, or they're also called a syllogism. Disposition is how our mind puts the ideas, propositions, and arguments which we have formed concerning one subject into the best order to gain the clearest knowledge of it and to retain it the longest. An example of this would be classifying something as a mineral, vegetable, etc. It is how we put our information. Method is how we arrange our thoughts in the best order for our own and for others' conception and memory. One example of method would be making a list of the operations of the mind. Perception, judgment, argumentation, disposition. That would be an example of method. Even if you may never get anything published, or have a large part of public speaking, it is to your advantage to know these rules of method so that you can learn how to judge with justice and accuracy concerning the performances of others. And knowledge and acquaintance of method can help everyone in ranging, disposing, and managing all human affairs.